Thank you guys. Salamat. Salamat. Hi guys, I'm Bea and this is a Raptor live jam session. I'm sure all of you have been waiting for. I have been getting so many messages. We've, get, we've been getting so many messages on Facebook. Awesome. And yes, they're here. They're live in the flesh because there are comments asking if you're really here in Manila. <laughs> yeah, they're back you? in Manila. They're back in Rappler HQ. Thank you. The Muffets and, are and here. And it is wonderful to be back. It really Thank is. You. Thank you for having us. So um, I'm pretty sure our viewers don't need introductions anymore, but introduce yourself. So there might be Gen Zs watching, and they'll be like... Well, I'm Scott. <laughs> I'm Bob. I'm Dave. And I'm Clint. Hi. Hey. So it's been... <laughs> and what's your name? Oh, I'm Bea. Bea. Oh, yes. Right on. <laughs> the last time you were here was 2017, right? Yes, Early that's right. Early 2017. Yeah. So what have you been up to since the last time you dropped by Rappler? Well, we recorded a new EP called Chapter 2. It's available on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon. It should be available on all downloadable platforms, uh, which was an awesome experience because it was the first time we'd ever actually been in the studio together recording new music, so in 20 years. It's been yeah. great. We've been up to a lot. It's uh, Scotty's producing stuff, and uh, Clint and I are working on music, the two of us together, so 
Up to a lot of stuff. We've been we've been busy, busy. We have been very busy. So if, in case you don't know yet, they're in Manila, they're in the Philippines for their reunion tour. You That's performed right. in Cebu a week ago, right? Yes. That's right. Yeah. How was that? It was amazing. It was a great show. The people were incredible. Um, it was one of those shows that just as the night went on, it got better and better. Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this getting better? <laughs> is this getting better? Because it looks like it. Is it just me? <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. Is it just me? Am no, I perceiving it, this differently you, over time? You were, you were but feeling no, it. no, I wasn't. It was right. It was really happening. Right. And then the day afterwards, actually, we had like a Moffat <laughs> X competition where we all had like 25 fans on each team. Yeah. And uh, it was hard work. We, our, our fans worked their butts off, but yes. yeah. we had a lot of fun with them, and it was, it was a cool experience to be able to share with them. And you're performing tomorrow yeah. again That's at right. the New, New Frontier Frontier. Theater, yeah. yeah, formerly the Kia Theater. Mm -hmm. And it's our first time playing there, and uh, it's going to be a great night. Uh, tomorrow night, New Frontier Theater, and uh, you can get tickets at ticketnet.com.ph. So we're going to have a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to sing along with the crowd. It's going to be a good time. We got a lot of old tunes we're br bringing out, too. Uh, we got some classics uh, like Miss It Crazy and stuff like that, but we're also going to be playing songs from Chapter 1 that never really saw the light of day too much. Like Don't Walk Away and Girl, I'm going to Get You. We're going to be doing these tunes. I know they're fan favorites. So it's they, they've been wonderful moments between us and the fans lately. Uh, singing these tunes, you know, rehashing the past. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> rehashing the past. Yeah. <laughs> what did it feel like to work together again after 20 years, was it? No, mm -hmm. not 20 years. Well, it was about 17 or 18 yeah. years. Yeah. And Honestly, uh, I think it kind of felt kind of similar in some ways. I mean, I think the dynamic <laughs> was very similar to the way that it was. Um, but I think the, the difference is we're a little older, and so... Some of those issues that you know you're gonna have as brothers in a band. I mean, just as brothers, and you put that in a band, <laughs> you know, things so are many gonna. So layers. Yeah, there's there's layers. So, but I think that we're a little older, so we we deal with things a little a little differently. Maybe a little bit more mature now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <Sometimes>. Hopefully, <laughs> Maybe. hopefully a little more mature. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Um, I have to ask, like you started in the late '90s, early 2000s. Um, it's been 20 years almost. Like. Yeah. What has changed in the music industry? And what hasn't? I think like pretty much everything has changed in the industry from distribution of music to the sound of music. Um, the way people listen to it. The way people listen to and it. The exactly. way, and the way they, they make it. Yeah. Um, and the people that make it, you know, and how uh, they find out about it and stuff like that. It's all <laughs> it's totally it's different. It's a different world. And yeah. you get to interact with fans easier, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, yeah, with social media, it's it's much easier to reconnect with your fans, and um, I think there's a, it's a, and it's a different type of connection too because I think it's very easy to connect and find your your mm. your audience and, and connect with your fans, but also, you know, uh, that that uh, person to person connection. You know, we're we're working on that too because mm. and important. that's evolving too. How do we get that back? How do we get a little bit more of that going on? You know, so. Um, it's 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 di it's a different world. <laughs> is that also why you guys make it a point to you know like for example visit the Philippines again? Like yeah, yeah. Well, we may we visit the Philippines because we love the Philippines. Um, <laughs> you know, every chance you know when we get a chance to come back here, it's very difficult for us to say no because we okay. love Manila. Um, we just love everything about this city and the people that we get to see every time we come back. Our friends um, and stuff like that. It's really wonderful. Okay, so I think some of your fans are complaining that we're talking too much. <laughs> so we will go on to the second song of the night. All right, all right. Um, can you tell us about it a bit? Well, this song is a song called Love, um, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I wrote this song um, uh, when I was probably like 13 years old. Wow. Um, and I wrote it in my bedroom, just sitting there, you know, thinking about a girl. <laughs> and uh, it goes a little something like this. It's called Love. First time I saw you, you were walking down the beach at night With the waves bowing down to you in the bright moonlight Well, it must have been a signal from up above Cause deep in my heart I knew that it was love and it turns me on like when the sun goes 
goes down and love comes up. Sweet, sweet love, I know what man has been touched by this simple process of Wish there was a way to show ya my love is real. But Webster hasn't found the words to express how I feel. Well, just like a river needs the rain to flow, you want the heart that once was cold with your love and it turns me on like when the sun goes down and the moon comes up sweet sweet love like no other man has been touched by this simple process of With your love And it turns me on Like when the sun goes down And the moon comes up Sweet, sweet love Like no other man has been touched By the simple process Salamat. Thank you. Hi, guys. This is Bea. You're watching Rappler Live Jam. And we have the Muffets over tonight. This is really fun because um, on Facebook, we ask them what your favorite Muffet song is. Mm. So we've, like, people are flooding the comments. Mm -hmm. um, a recurring favorite is I Miss You Like Crazy. How does it feel that your songs are, in many ways, like they're iconic songs of people's teenhood you know like mm, yeah. like uh -huh. um someone from rappler actually was 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 joking earlier that like i miss you like crazy was a song that as uh, a song that's close to her because it was dedicated to her back in grade two mm -hmm. so oh, <laughs> sorry. wow so that's so cool <laughs> raise your hand if you're not no never mind so how does it make you feel that you know your songs are tied to so many vivid mm. childhood teenhood memories yeah well, I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's yeah go ahead yeah, no that's one of the coolest things i think that that i've discovered since being here and and coming back over all those years is the impact that those songs have had. I never, I never thought that that would happen. You know, I mean, when you're over here, you're young, and you're just releasing that music for the first time. I think it was around '98 yeah. when those songs came out. I never envisioned that those songs would have the type of impact they've had in this country, and it's been it's been uh, really amazing to see that. I mean, I, I don't think there's a greater gift to us than mm. 20 years later those songs having the life that they've had. Yeah. Very relevant and very. Again, They're still the relevant. They're sort of sort of passing down to to the other generations. So, you know, our fans. Uh, there's a lot of fans that we had that have had kids, and they're probably <laughs> going to grow up on that music. It's kind of like similar to probably what the Eagles experienced. Exactly. I mean, in a weird way. Yeah, like one generation yeah. grows up listening to us children. We're like the modern parents. Eagles. You know? I mean, <laughs> if people are, if the younger generation is willing to hear it and to listen to it, um, and the parents are uh, and the older people are willing to share it too. Yeah. Um, then that creates a pretty cool dynamic. But I think the, the cool thing about the Philippines that I've noticed is that it, when, when something comes around that connects with the people of the Philippines, it doesn't matter like if it was like Air Supply or the Eagles, they, they will always appreciate it and love it. They won't um, discard it and move on right. to something else. They'll move on to something else and appreciate other they're things, but they'll cool. always remember that. And that's a really amazing quality. Um, that the Filipino people have. Yeah. 
I have to ask though, like when you listen to your old recordings, like you were very, very young then. Like w what goes through your head when you <laughs> hear younger versions of yourselves? Well, I mean, I think, I think it's really kind of unique because, I mean, there's a lot of young artists out today, but I think the age that we were at, we, I mean, we were 13, 14, 14, 15, I guess, and maybe even younger when that stuff was recorded. And you're not hearing people really that young on the radio anymore. You know, it's mm, kind of like, you know, true. 18, 19, right. um, which is still very young. But I think hearing those voices, I just like, sometimes I, I go like, how did we have <laughs> so much success at that age? And not only that, you know, our voices, we were so young, but there were people that were, you know, 30 in their 40s and stuff like that were loving Missy Like Crazy at that time. And I think that goes and talks, talks you know, strengths about how, how those songs impacted people, the lyrics and stuff like that. So it was cool. It's cool to hear that stuff again. How have you guys evolved as artists like, collectively, individually through the years? Like, is the songwriting process different now? Is it different when you, you know, go on stage or you, or you do shows like this? Um, yeah. Um, I definitely think th things have changed. Um, uh, um, sometimes it's uh, it's even more difficult than it was when I was a kid, you know, to do a lot of these things. Um, but I think that's part of you know understanding what you do, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, the writing has changed. Uh, we have a lot more to draw on as far as topics go, um, and a lot of ways of getting around the story. Um, uh, you know, a lot more um, of a database of melody, you know, to draw from, from the years of, uh, you know, listening to music and stuff right. like that, and uh, building m musical memories um, and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Musical yeah. memories. Musical memories. Musical memories. Speaking of musical memories, I want to read some comments from our viewers, your fans. Mary Joy Togonan says, they still have the same effect on me from way back. Very That's cool. Awesome. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. I have to ask also, like, um, Almost two decades. Uh, why do you still do what you guys do? Because we love doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like it's a great thing to be able to do. Um, you know, I can't imagine doing anything else. To be honest. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, you have to think like when we got into it. I mean, it wasn't. It was a different time, right? I mean, there wasn't many people our age doing it. You know, uh, just probably yeah. because there wasn't as much opportunity, there wasn't as many outlets to, exp you know, to, to share with people to maybe get a chance. And so we were just doing it because we wanted to do it, we loved it, and there was really no, we were too young to be getting into it for, you know, reasons like maybe monetary reasons. And or, or even or girls. We were too young we were for too that, young too. For <laughs> we were really too sure. young for girls. I mean, we were, we were three, four years old, you know, <laughs> we started singing, so it was a little weird. And we were too yeah. young to even, you know, think about even wanting to do it to be famous, because at that point in time, um, <coughs> you, you didn't just really didn't, understand what you didn't really understand. No. Celebrity yeah. wasn't even really a thing yeah. <laughs> yeah. in the 90s. I we mean, it was. Really the music. People were famous, but celebrities, celebrities evolved into something much more different than it was in the right. 90s. Celebrity is something hard to understand, I think, as little kids goes, but you can understand music. You can understand you know, a passion in an artist. You can see that stuff. But, you know, maybe the fo pictures and stuff, it doesn't really make sense. It's like the flashing lights and stuff. Right, right. Okay, people are asking. Again, they have a reunion concert tomorrow that's right. at the New Frontier. It's called the New Frontier yeah. Theater now. That's yes. correct. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to get tickets, where can they go? Where can they uh, you know buy this. it? <laughs> this, is, this is my, g my this thing. This is his line. Okay. Ticketnet.com.ph. That's where you get the tickets. Right <laughs> yeah, you get it, you're man. so good at that. I'm. You know what? Bob's I'm a fan. Doing it, man. I'm Bob's a, a fan favorite too. Yeah. You're doing it, Bob. So. You're doing it. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> What's next for you guys after tomorrow? Beyond? Do, can fans expect you know new new releases? I'm sure that's in the in the fold. You know, I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the future with the Moffats? Um, I don't think we're we're just working this record right now. I um, mean, every single that comes off of this record, uh, but we're not putting it out of the picture. Um, uh, I know that Endless Summer, my brothers here, Clint and Bob, have projects that are, they're constantly releasing new stuff. Right. Um, and Dave, I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> I have no idea either, actually. <laughs> Probably go back to you. Hang out. You want to come back here and just... I want to, I want, that's, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm putting too much time... Um, that I can't pull myself and explore. I'm, I'm based in Jakarta right now, so oh, okay. I want to use this opportunity to explore and, and visit and 
not have to worry about really working, but you know, doing yoga and just traveling and seeing Pretty sweet. a lot of this beautiful country. You know, there's so much to see. Right. Oh, I have to ask, because you've been in the Philippines for almost two weeks now? A week. A little yeah, 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 yes. Right? Yeah, but you've been mostly doing media tours. Yeah. What do you wish, what things do you wish you, would, you were able to do in the Philippines? Like, what do you want to do? I'd like to head over to that Shargo Island and maybe catch Beautiful. a couple waves. <laughs> yeah. You know, drink a cold, cold one and just hang out on the beach. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, I've never been to really any of the Filipino beaches. And oh, no. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. You should find them. And they're some of the most beautiful in the world. Like, yeah. I mean, I think on the top down, ten, there's like down. seven. <laughs> But I want to go see those whale sharks. No argument. No. no argument. I mean, I keep on seeing pictures of it. I'm like, <laughs> where is this? When is my they time? Is this really the Chocolate Hills? No, I've been to the Chocolate Hills. Oh, the Chocolate Hills. I've been I like to, to go there, I've too. I've been to Bohol. Bohol is all, uh, like a, a great hills. visit. Is the Chocolate Hills, can you eat on the hills? Do I you hope you on. Or do you eat chocolate they on the They look like little I Hershey kisses. I hope you don't kisses. eat the hill, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, that no, would be horrible. Like Willy Wonka hills or something? Like, you can't actually eat? <laughs> okay, you're fine. No, All right, no. Fine. <laughs> Settle down over there. And Luzon looks beautiful. I'd like to visit up into Luzon. And up north. Yeah. Up north. Oh. Check out the Vom. Even Mount Mayong. Okay. I'd yeah. love to go to Mount Mayong. And even, uh, even Manila. This place is loaded. I feel like you have tour guides. <laughs> like even Manila, guides, that's right. You're all over the lake. Like, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know, <laughs> even Manila, today we went to um, a fort. Uh, that was stunning. It was gorgeous, the rock walls and stuff like that. Yeah. And I want to read more about the history of it and how it transferred hands and all these beautiful stories that, that connect that, that one building. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, you guys should come back to Manila uh, for fun next time. Yeah, fun. yeah. Philippines yeah. for fun. Okay, yeah. so we're down to our last song of the night, mm. unfortunately. But don't worry, you can watch them live tomorrow at the New Frontier Theater. Theater. That's right. That's yeah. right. I know it as the, uh, with the <laughs> old name. So your last song is So In Love. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, it's our new single, and uh, we wrote this one. Uh, well, the three of us wrote it. Scott wasn't there, unfortunately, I think. You know, maybe it would have been a little better. Maybe <laughs> not. Maybe not. It's debatable. Um, but anyways, it's uh, it's kind of, uh, for us, we kind of went back and, and listened to some of that stuff on Chapter 1. We hadn't listened to it in years. And uh, and it just sort of, uh, I, I think it inspired this song. You know, it inspired the songwriting of it and probably the production a little bit too. But, uh, but it was just cool to dive back into some of that old stuff and kind of hear where we were at and try to learn from that again because you kind of forget some of the things you learn along the way. But this sort of reintroduced us back to that kind of stuff, and we're super happy with it. Hey, Scotty? <laughs> it's pretty dang good. Yeah. It's pretty dang good. We'll get to it. So in love, guys. Here we go. One, uh -huh. two, three, four. If the candles lock the door Kick the sheets to the floor Shook the pictures off the wall Every moment I recall The taste I have tattooed Each and every curve of you and I know my way around you in the dark I know you
Thank you, guys. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys so much. Thank we'll you. see you next time, Rappler. And applauding. It's very nice of you. Thank you. <laughs>